Thank you, Dave. It's always hard following someone who's been a star on Sesame Street, among so many other things. <laughs> Thank you all for being here tonight. It is an extraordinary honor and privilege to be with you. It is an extraordinary honor and privilege to receive this award. Let me begin by thanking ALDEF for the critically important and tireless work it has done to advance the civil rights of Asian Americans for more than 45 years. All this dedication to the many issues affecting the lives of Asian Americans has always been an inspiration to me and a trust to so many of you here tonight. ALDEF has protected and advanced the rights of Asians to immigrate to America. It has protected the rights of Asians from the moment they arrive in America. It has secured pay for workers laboring in restaurants, laboring in garment factories, providing domestic services. It has educated Asian Americans about their voting rights and litigated to protect those rights. And it has protected the integrity and vitality of Asian American neighborhoods and communities when under attack. And ALDEF has been a consistent voice for the policies that promote diversity in higher education. In Fisher, ALDEF filed a brief cited in Justice Kennedy's majority opinion in support of the university's race-conscious admissions policy, where it articulated in a compelling manner the really true and educational benefits of diversity. And most recently, in the SFFA case that Devo described, a case which my partners and I tried together, ALDEF submitted a critically important brief in support of Harvard's admissions, race-conscious admissions program. The brief educated the court on the vast diversity within the Asian American community and the manner in which Asian Americans benefit from race-conscious admissions. Harvard and I and all of my partners were so grateful to have ALDEF's support. Our case benefited in immeasurable ways from ALDEF's perspective and voice. The result was, as a Boston Globe headline said, and I quote, a defined defense of affirmative action in higher education. There are so many people to thank for this award this evening. My mentors, my colleagues, my partners from H Wilmer Hale who are here tonight, my colleagues and friends at Harvard, my friends in the profession, and particularly my family. I'm simply not going to try. Instead, I want to tell you a family story, a family story of immigration and opportunity that I hope will have some meaning in these very difficult times of today. This is the same story I told recently at a dinner hosted by the American lawyer. I apologize in advance if any of you were there before. I am an anchor baby. I was born in America and therefore a citizen. I was born to parents who had immigrated here, but who at the time of my birth were subject to deportation proceedings. My parents were born and raised in Shanghai. My mother was from a wealthy family of a Chinese merchant. My grandfather was known as the Iron Abacus. The Iron Abacus had arranged for marriage for my mother to a wealthy heir of the Bank of China. But my mother was not interested and had other ideas. She had instead fallen in love with my father, an intellectually gifted but hopelessly poor young man. They were married on June 12, 1948. The next day, they boarded a boat for America, where my father had an internship with the General Electric Company. On June 16th, the communists began the Battle of Shanghai and drove the nationalists from Shanghai. By the time my parents landed in San Francisco, their families had scattered around China and the world. They had no country to which to return. They had no way to contact their families or friends. They had a total of $25 to their names, but they set out to make a new life in America. Now, it was not an easy, easy time to be Asian in America. World War II and the conflict with Japan were a raw memory. The Korean conflict was brewing. The law prohibited immigrating Chinese from becoming United States citizens. 
I even sat with my mother when the neighbors voted the restrictive covenants, which were no longer legally enforceable when we bought our first home. But my parents believed in the promise and opportunity of America. They were optimistic. They persevered. In 1950, my father's internship ended, and he was unemployed. They had nowhere to go. Deportation proceedings were commenced against both my parents. They had no idea what to do. They had no country to which to return. On March, March 14, 1950, I was born. I was a citizen, and they were the parents of a citizen, and therefore entitled to visas. The deportation proceedings were terminated, and four years later, the law prohibiting Chinese from becoming naturalized citizens was repealed. They became citizens. My Chinese name is Li Wei Feng, which translates to the helpful one, for obvious reasons. <laughs> now, much has happened since then. Both my parents have passed away. My mother passed away just this last June at the age of 92. But the family they started with their $25 and nothing much more has grown and now numbers 24. We are from America, China, Spain, Iran, and Bangladesh. We are Catholics, Jews, Episcopalians, Muslims, and agnostics. We are lawyers, scientists, doctors, managers, and educators. I offer this story to you tonight because I hope it makes clear the opportunity our country provides to immigrants, immigrants such as my parents. But I also hope it demonstrates what immigrants can do for our country. I offer you the story in the hope that we will do all in our power to ensure that the next couple, the next couple like my parents who arrive in America, have the same opportunity they had and are not turned away at the border. Now, much progress has been made since my parents arrived in the United States, but progress is never perfection, and progress is never complete. There are many challenges confronting Asian Americans and Asian American communities today, challenges that I would briefly like to address and that I hope we will work together to address. Rather than the so-called yellow peril of the last century, we are now often called the model minority. The model minority is a myth, one that would have you believe that Asian Americans as a whole are one of the most prosperous, well-educated groups in the country. Many of, many of us are, but the reality is much, much more complex. The poverty rate of Asian Americans as a group in America is higher than the United States average poverty rate. In education, Asian Americans are still less likely than whites to finish high school. The need of Asian American students, particularly for English language instructional services, are often overlooked because administrators and policymakers simply assume they don't need them. In housing, picture two is less rosy than you might think. One in five Asian Americans report experiencing discrimination when seeking to rent or buy a home. Asian Americans have actually experienced the largest percentage decline in home ownership in the United States among all racial groups. And in the workplace, about a third of Asian Americans reported they had endured discrimination. That is a higher percentage than almost any other racial group. And in specialized professions, Asian Americans face what the writer Jane Hoon called the bamboo ceiling. In our own profession, the legal profession, there are now over 50,000 Asian American lawyers. For nearly 20 years now, we have been the largest minority group in large law firms. But we have the highest attrition rates. And in management and leadership roles, a role that I was privileged to play at my firm for 12 years, we are represented less than virtually any other group. I've been proud to witness the progress that Asians and Asian Americans have made in this country and all that has occurred since my parents arrived in 1948. But as these few facts demonstrate, I hope, there are many challenges today, challenges that demonstrate that there is much left to be done. This is a moment in time. This is a moment in history, in particular, 
for all of us to join together to address these challenges. Just as ALDEF has fundamentally changed our world for the better, I hope that each of us will join with ALDEF and with each other to do our part to achieve a better world. Thank you very much.